from Portos Events. Hi, this is Alamjit Flora from Portos Events. Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday talk show. The show is brought to you every Wednesday by Portos Events. The ones who do not know about us, we are Portos Events, a Sweden-based event management company. We have been here for a few years now and we've done a lot of live shows and in the sector of education, cultural and, and also a lot of entertainment programs. So it's great to have you on our show today. We had a first show last week and it was amazing. We had such, such, such good reviews about the show. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We are humbled and grateful for all the love that we have received from you. So thank you for joining us today again. We have with us today again, uh, Dr. Rajesh Savera. He was with us last week and we spoke about a lot of issues on health related, on, on dietitians, a lot of other things. So today we continue the talk with him. So welcome Dr. Rajesh again with us. Namaste. Hi Alan. Rajesh. Hi, how are you? Good evening and good morning to you also. Thank you. This thing. Thank you so much. Yes. Good morning uh, from Pune and yes. hope everything is fine in uh, you're in Stockholm, right? Yes, we are in Stockholm. Yeah. And how have you been? Did you see how many views we got? The show was very well uh, received. We got a lot of reviews from US, from from Canada, like name it, it went global. So I'm very happy and thank you for, you know, uh, being our first guest again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, if you talk uh, something that interests people and today the most important thing that people are interested to know is about the health. And that definitely makes any uh, talk show, you know, wherein you're discussing health popular enough, you know, globally. Yeah, very true. So uh, thank you so much. Talking about, you know, we, we covered so many topics uh, last week. You know, we spoke about you, you spoke about so many things regarding what food to eat and how we could take care of our immunity and a, a lot of other issues that we touched upon. But uh, taking it forward from here, it's like, you know, uh, in the COVID time, we are having so many issues of mental health. So uh, could we could we talk a little bit about that? Because now I see people like opening up to the issue. It was very hush hush before, but now it's become so uh, dominant that it's very, it's very important to speak up on this issue. So I'm sure you can guide us. You please give us some guidance on that. Yes, Alam, uh, if you look at uh, the situation today globally, uh, it is said that every third person will suffer from any uh, or many of these uh, psychiatric conditions. The most uh, important one that uh, people will suffer from is called anxiety because anxiety is the fear of the unknown. And if you look at uh, the COVID time, the COVID time has opened the Pandora's box. You know, it, things have just come out. The mind has now been put into a situation. Now it's really starting to show up its basic uh, nature, you know, of worry. And that's the basic nature of the mind. Usually when we are living, when everything is fine, safe, the mind is very casual enough to just live happily without any fear. But as soon as things get a little weird and there is a, a you know, a kind of uncertainty that creeps around in our lives, that's when the vulnerability of the mind is visible. And you see the anxiety right now, which the is like along with the COVID, there's a pandemic of anxiety uh, that has uh, encompassed the whole globe. And the reason for that is something to do with the mind. And uh, we need to understand that mental illness is considered to, one, uh, to be one of the major illnesses along with other chronic illnesses and also is also the root cause of many of the chronic illnesses that we suffer from. So yes, you cannot ignore mental health. Mental health has to be understood very well. And the solution is not just popping a pill, you know, anti-psychiatric pill, but understanding how we manage. As I told you, you know, by when somebody gets diabetes, the answer is not just finding an insulin or an anti-diabetic pill to solve that uh, blood sugar level problems, but is to manage it with a lifestyle change. Same is with your mental health. You need to identify what are the things that are actually affecting us and how do we find a way out from this? Yeah. 
Uh, very true. Yes, Allah. And, and what kind of things uh, can we look for? You know, when we see ourselves diverging, you know, towards uh, that. So, what what could be the signs, maybe, of something like that? See, now uh, there are a few people that I'm been watching, and the only thing that uh, creates more anxiety and more worry is uncertainty. As I said, people are not sure. You know, there is so much of information that is out there, and information is so scattered. On one side, people are talking about how dangerous COVID is, and the other side, people are so casual about it. People are saying, you know. So many people are dying. The other side, suddenly there is a positive hope that no, so many people are living. In the whole chaos and confusion, the mind just doesn't know what to choose. And it keeps on, you know, oscillating between yes and no and yes and no. And these things, they create a physical change, you know. What happens mm -hmm. is, you know, see, look at the mind. Mind is so powerful. As soon as the mind gets affected, it affects the body. You look, worry will suddenly increase your heart rate. Worry will cause kind of palpitations, or it could cause, and uh, you know, you have sweating in your on your forehead. You might sweat through your hands. Uh, you could have a shiver. Somebody, some people have like um, you know butterflies in their stomach, a kind of a naughty feeling. Somebody just keeps on shaking their legs. There are many physical symptoms that you can see in a mental illness. You look at the best thing, best example to find what a mental illness can do. Go to an asylum and you'll see all these mentally sick people engage in some physical activity, you know, like this and this and that. Why? Because mind needs the body to express itself. And when it is confused, it does so even on your body, you know. Okay. Uh, so what, what are the kind of, you know, chronic, uh, chronic diseases that uh, these can follow, like the mental health? Yes. So uh, there would be many, so, I, as I said, starting with anxiety, which is a major one, then it can lead to depression from mild depression. It could be going to major depression. Then people could have split personality, schizophrenia. People could land up having major complications because with this, you know, damage of your central nervous system, your thinking ability, you could have other conditions that can come up like, uh, you know, ADHD, but, where attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, like you find them in children, then you could end up having uh, uh, you know, a condition where you have a kind of a psychosis. Then you could have some kind of a belief and you start living your life with that belief. You could have uh, you know, uh, com conditions like even insomnia would uh, have its root in a mental illness. Uh, even uh, simple things like um, you know, uh, in future, having Alzheimer's and dementia, all these things, they land up into a big network of uh, mental illnesses. And even simple thing, even having lack of confidence, I consider that is a mental illness, you know, somewhere it is to do with your mind, anything to do with your mind, I would put them into the category of mild, uh, mental illness. The only thing is, it's a spectrum, some conditions are on the milder side, some are on the worst side. Okay. Uh yeah, I, I see that, uh, you know, it can vary f in so many different forms. But uh, what could be your guidance uh, for someone who can see the early signs of this, uh, you know, try to control? Mm -hmm. uh, I know you are into meditation and, uh, and you are a, a teacher in that. So can meditation help uh, in this? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know... I always uh, tell my people, you know, from whom you are trying to get knowledge, you need to find out his credentials, you know. So like, for example, if somebody wants to listen me out, he needs to know who am I? Why would somebody want to even listen to me if he doesn't know who am I? What is my background? What is my experience? You know, what authority I have to speak on something? So let me first tell you what I have. Yeah? I've done my BAMS, that's Bachelor of Ayurvedic Medicine and Surgery from Pune University. In I passed out in 1999. And it's been almost 20 years that I chose whatever I studied was not necessary to be practiced, you know, into a kind of a medicinal practice, but was to be practiced as a lifestyle as medicine practice. Mm -hmm. And so my approach was totally different. See, Alam, I believe the greatest warrior who knows to use all the weapons and who has all the weapons is the one who never used that, you know, because he had better skill of managing things without using the weapons. I believe medicine is like that. If you can use that, you know, only when you need it. And if you need it, it means you have failed somewhere in teaching and educating people, you know. So I believe if I could teach people, 
in living a life without medicines, without any kind of medicines, with a lifestyle change, I'm able to achieve a phenomenal success on the principles of Ayurveda. So that brings my Ayurveda credentials. Also, I have done my master's in psychotherapy and counseling, but that doesn't stop. A two-year master's degree does not give you the authority to speak on it. But it's been my almost 12 years journey into identifying so many things about myself, people. I've read a lot uh, and I still keep on reading. I've uh, you know, uh, tried to understand the whole uh, human psyche through a great masters from Jiddu Krishnamurti, from, uh, you know, Zen masters, I've read uh, the Upanishads, uh, Vedas, uh, you know, even I've read the Bible, the Quran, and I've understood one thing. Everybody talk about this thing called peace within us. And if we can bring peace within us, we the majority of your physical illness. And as you asked, is that a way? Yes, there is a way. And uh, Buddha used to say that a man is what he thinks. So if we can change the way we think, we can change ourselves, you know, we can be what we want. So today, if you're physically not fit, it's because something is going on somewhere. Somebody is driving this machine, this body. And if we can change that, if we can only make sure that it drives in the on the right track, I'm sure life will be in order. And that's what meditation is all about. Meditation is about, you look at it, the word meditation. Meditation is mediation. Mediation means coming in between the body and the mind, you know. Because the mind and the body, they are always in a flux. They're keeping on uh, engaging themselves with each other. So meditation is a process of just sitting there, observing some of your physical activity and the one that you do not control and you control also. So what is it? Can I observe my heartbeat, which I cannot control? It just keeps on palpating, right? Do you, can you control your heartbeat? No. No. So we cannot no. meditate on that because that is out of our control. What yes. is that involuntary action within your body, which can also be voluntarily control, controlled? Which is, which is that? Do you have any idea? Something that happens to you without your control, but you can, if you want, you can also control. What is it? <laughs> like, like horses, you know, have you, have you, have you sat on a buggy? You know, the horses yeah. run. Yeah. You have the, yeah. Okay. If you don't do anything, the horses can run. Yeah. Okay. But if you want, you can actually pull the strings and make the horses run also. Yeah. Or stop it, right. So what is mm -hmm. that thing in your body that you can, if you're not doing anything, it still works. And if you're not doing anything, or so if you want to control it, you can control it. What is it? <laughs> Alam, it, it is, it yeah, is it. your breath. It is your breath, Alam. You look oh, at yeah, this. We, 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 we do not do anything for it. You know, it just happens to us. But if yeah. we want, I can take a deep breath mm. and feel relaxed. You see, yeah. that is the bridge between the involuntary and the voluntary. That is the key for us mm. to go from the, uh, you can say, voluntary system to the involuntary system, the autonomic nervous system, you know. So when we meditate, we meditate on this thing, the thing that goes in and out, that is the breath. And so we sit down and we only observe. We do not interfere like a judge. Judge what he does. He watches the left side, the uh, lawyer and the right side lawyer compete or fight with each other, put in their points. But he doesn't do anything. He just waits till they finish, listens to them very calmly, quietly. At the end passes the judgment. But here there's no judgment to be passed also. We just observe. When you observe your breath, you will see that there are breaths that are deep. Some breaths are shallow. Some are very, very, you know, subtle. Some are very cross. So you see the quality of the breath and you also appreciate that, hey, you know, there is something happening to me. There is something that is going inside me and coming outside of me. And that is what life is. And suddenly it relaxes you. It calms you down. And that is what we call meditation. It's a simple art but with a profound result on your mind. Wow. Amazing. You you really explained it very well. I actually felt relaxed when you said that. When you feel your breath, when you know what, what's coming and going, it's it's a it's nice observation to have, which we normally don't. So what uh, like it's very confusing, you know, for a for a beginner, like from where do I start? Do I just sit and just think that, you know, I'm not going to think anything, just observe my breath. Is it possible? How long? You know, it's like five minutes up, nothing is happening. I go like, 
uh, how can you guide someone? We know the importance of, uh, you know, the long-term importance of meditation, but how do we begin? See, now, um, I always give an example, you know, uh, how do you, now, you see, there is so much confusion around the meditation market. It is said to be a $30 billion market itself, you know, and there are so many people trying to confuse and sell their products. But how do you know? Is it true meditation or is it something that has been just designed to become a product that has been taught uh, by somebody and we buy it and then we practice it? No. Let me make it very clear. First, understand what is meditation. Okay. Now, imagine. Now, you have to come into this conversation. Okay. Imagine you have a nice um, buggy. Okay. Which does not have a horse. Okay. It doesn't have a horse and you want a horse to run this buggy. Now, uh, I tell you. Uh, Alam, there is a jungle. In that jungle, there is a white horse. You go and catch it. And that horse can drive this buggy. You said, wow. So what would you do? Would you go to the jungle and just catch it and come? Is it so easy? No. A wild horse, okay? A wild horse. What would you do? How train would you myself, catch it? Train myself to catch it, I think. Uh, okay. How would you catch the wild white horse? I just told you in the jungle... You have not even seen what is inside you. I've told you in the jungle, there is a white horse. And can you go and just catch it? And you can put it on your uh, buggy and it will take you wherever you want. And it's a wild horse. Okay, let me make it very simple, you know. Yeah, make would it you, would you Would you ask the help of a few people to have some ropes? You want to catch yeah. the horse. That's, is that a way you can catch the horse? And yeah, then when course. you catch that it, yeah, yes, yeah. you can catch Definitely. the horse. Now, first yeah. is jungle is huge. Where do you find him? Mm. Where do you find the horse? If you have to. You know, one place it will come for sure. Where is it? Where is it? Near the water to drink the water. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. What you answered right now is amazing. It goes mm -hmm. to the water. That's the place where it has to go. So if mm. you stay there, it will come there. This is exactly what happens to your mind. The mind is like a wild horse. It keeps on running here and there. You can never find it. But if you observe your breath, this is the place where it comes for sure, whatever happens. Okay. So now you observe the wild horse. Now you observe the wild horse. Would you go and catch it immediately? Um, yes, right? You go and yeah. You know, I've come there. Some... Exactly. That's what people do. When they see that, okay, this is the breath, they, they try to hold the mind. You know, they want to engage the mind, hold on to the horse. Now you caught the horse. You bring it, you tie it, you whack it, you tie it to your buggy, you push it, you do everything just to pull your buggy. Do you think that horse will be a happy horse? No. Because you forced him, right? Yeah. It has gone through so much pain and torture. Yeah. That is not what I call real meditation. Now, let me give you another way. Imagine you get to know the horse, okay? It's in uh, coming near the lake. You go every day. You just observe the horse, okay? Mm. And you see the horse and the horse sees you. First time when it sees you, it runs away. But again, it mm. comes back. You do this every day you go there. Every day the horse is going to look at you. But someday it knows that you're not harming the horse, harmful. right? Mm. Yeah, so you're not harmful. So slowly, slowly, you come a little close. It comes a little close. You might have seen this in many movies, you know, where... Yeah. Well, yeah, you seen that scene, you know, when they touch. Yeah. That is exactly what I call meditation. And this is called the state where it is effortlessly following you. Mm -hmm. You don't need to follow. Then when you go, it doesn't go back into the jungle. It will follow you. When you say you want to drive the buggy, it comes and it ties itself up directly. This is when your mind becomes yours. It doesn't bother you anymore. It serves you. And this is what is the power of harnessing the mind, you know, with love, compassion and not torturing yourself. And that's what can be done with a practice called Shunya, which traces its uh, history almost 2,500 years back in India, where you sit down in any comfortable position. It's very easy. You can try that whenever you have time. Just sit down mm -hmm. and observe. close your eyes. Don't need to close it completely. You know, you should do this phenomena. When you close your eyes, and you keep your eyeball, uh, eyeballs uh, up, you know, you can start imagining. Once the eyeball comes down, your imagination stops. That's how this machine works, you know. You can try this, whatever I'm saying, you know. Mm -hmm. It's been now eight years of this into, into the finding the subtle things. 
okay so don't don't roll your eyes up not your eyeballs up but let them be down so you observe something at 45 degrees keep your eyes like this watch your breath going in and out only watch then engage your mind into counting 9 when the breath goes in and out 9 in and out 8 you do the reverse counting why because the mind has the habit of going forward you do it the other way around you see then yeah. you're you when you're resetting your mind trust me if you're able to count from 9 to 0 you're mentally perfect if you're able to count from 29 to 0 okay <laughs> now i'm telling you now this 90% of the people cannot you understand what i'm saying 90% yeah. of the people cannot count 929 to 0 because they have some kind of depression or come anxiety stress something is there 99 to 0 is the most challenging one which takes probably 1% in the whole population would be able to do that and that is the most important thing of the practice if you can do that you have the most amazing and stable mind so i've given you the most easiest way to do meditation now Oh yeah, like I can see the comments coming. Uh, I don't know if you can, but can people not. have loved your uh, horse and the mind analogy a lot. Like you know, it it has I think uh, uh, been understood and liked by everyone. So great. Uh, add uh, like uh, if he's talking about uh, meditation. Uh, so uh, what is you know? I'm also thinking if it's good to you know even teach your children uh, meditation. so uh can we start is it good how does it help them uh Alam, uh since you have raised this question we need to do it very early in age you need to teach children that if your child can count if it can sit peacefully in some place for some time it can sit peacefully in any situation in any time okay this is the key okay there was a marshmallow experiment you can google and you can find out there was a marshmallow experiment done on children to find out how much patient they were you know and how much uh, they could control themselves and they found out between 5 to 6 years old kids they were given a marshmallow and they were asked to not eat the marshmallow for 10 minutes and if they achieved that state of controlling their desires for 10 minutes they would get double the marshmallow i want everybody who's listening this to go and google and youtube this marshmallow experiment and you'll see what amazing results they have come up with after 20 years after what the experiment was done the children that were able to be patient were able to sit without getting you know uh, their desires met they were able to control their desires were all successful in their lives and the ones who could not control their desires had to pay a big price so yes this experiment was a long experiment but it did wonders children need to be taught the art of meditation it is the key for their happiness in the future not only their future mental health but your physical health also remember i told you mind and body cannot be separated your immunity is nothing but your mind alam yes. if your mind is in order your immune system is in order if your mind is in disorder your immune system is in disorder okay and yes. that is when i say about uh, the children the most easiest way is to engage them in a group where they are coming together and meditating and you will see profound results in their life they will do amazing things you know they can achieve great things in life yeah like uh, with all these gadgets and uh, everything occupying their life so much and it's very difficult to see kids uh, really come down and do these kind of activities so it will be a you know, nice Allah, i want to add one thing you know you need yeah. to understand so you will realize this you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying do not believe every word of mine you have to test it and you have to experience experience it and experiment it okay yeah. now there are four levels of consciousness you know you see when we were small kids when we were very young we only had sensual consciousness we could only sense the world through our senses through our eyes through our nose through our ears through our taste or through our touch they are to the these are the only senses we use to know things around okay then as we evolve we become young we have this mind consciousness where the i comes in where alam comes in where rajesh comes in we want to do something for the i you know we want to have an identity in the society we want to do that that's the i consciousness then as you evolve the i is superseded by feelings 
where the heart consciousness comes in. Now you start feeling, you know, yes, you know, family, relationships, the world at large and everything. Then your feelings start coming. That's a level of consciousness. Then you go up beyond that. Then comes the realization of the self. Who am I? Why am I here? What am I here for? What is this life all purpose of? And that is the supreme uh, realization. And that inquiry leads us into a different phase. So you'll see a lot of people like me get to turn in Krakow at this particular level. You know, we talk something very nonsense, but that's how it is because we are at a different stage. You know, a, a child would not like to hear me out because I'm not in his state of consciousness. But if I go into his sensual consciousness, I play with him, then he will like me. But if I give him all the gyan, he will not like me. You understand? So we need to go and you have to change, alter our consciousnesses according to the person whom you're talking to. And then you will see how well you blend with everybody. Yeah, that is that is a life lesson. So thank you so much. Uh, we are getting questions and we have very less time left for the show. Uh, sure, sure. You have a compliment that you have very good hair. So any tips? Or good COVID, COVID <laughs> no, I'll give you a tip. I really want to give a tip for the hair. People yeah. think uh, you need to oil your hair. Uh, last uh, almost now four years, I've been doing a practice which is totally different from what I've been you know, hearing or been taught. I realized that hair are basically an outgrowth that comes out from the skin. And if the skin is healthy, your hair is healthy. People have this habit of oiling their hair. But actually, that's not good. That's not advised. You know, what you need to do is you need to oil your skin from your uh, neck downwards. You need to oil it enough so that during the day, the excretion of the oil is in your hair. It means your oil enters your skin and is thrown out through your hair roots. You know, and that's when you will see. Oh, today morning I applied oil here. By afternoon, evening, oil is coming out here. That is the way you nourish your hair. So not here. Just by you know spraying some water on the leaves, the plant does not survive. You need to put water on the roots. And this is the root. So you put oil on your uh, whole body before a shower. That will do the job for your hair. Okay. So no oiling hair? I, or... I definitely know. No, no, no. Not oh. needed. Okay. Okay. And uh, another tip. Tips for kids' concentration other than meditation for 8 to 10 years old. Yeah. So the best way is to engage them in some kind of a play, some kind of an activity where the mind is focused. Could be a puzzle, could be a quiz, could be a game like cricket. They have to be engaged in any kind of a physical activity where the fine motor uh, movements as well as the gross motor movements of their body they are in getting a, some kind of interaction with the object of attention. Could be sports. Uh, you play with some sports and you need a ball. Ball becomes the object of uh, attention. And you have the gross and the uh, subtle uh, you know, motor movements. These motor movements, they actually transform the mental movements. You know, And as I told you, it's the mind that drives the body, but the other way around also it works. Uh, in the early childhood, it's the body that drives the mind. So people who are engaged in some kind of sports will see their children transform drastically in focus and attention. True, true, true. Uh, another question for Alzheimer's. Uh, is there a way we can delay Alzheimer's for middle-aged women? Sure, there is. Uh, uh, brain is nothing but a fat tissue, a lump of fat that's got all the neurons, that's got all the electric activity. It is the seat of our intelligence, but not only it is the seat of our intelligence, it's also the seat of our emotions. It's a seat for many things. I People have this confusion that your mind is inside the brain. No, brain is an organ, okay? Mind is like a signal that comes to the brain. So if your brain is not good, your mind is not uh, able to enter into your brain and function. That is why mind can travel distance far, you know, because that has the mind has the ability to travel. Now, for the brain, you need to take good, healthy fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids are very, very good. You can get them from white meat. You can get them uh, from red meat. But when I say meat, you need to be very sure that the meat that you're eating is of good quality. Uh, then you need to have a clean gut to have good meat also. Then there are good oils. 
there are good uh, fatty acids like the virgin coconut oil, the virgin olive oil. If they become a part of your diet, oily, oiling your body, oleation therapy that we call, is also the key. No constipation should be... Constipation is the key for any mental illness, even Alzheimer's and dementia. Because your gut and brain, there is an axis that works together, the gut-brain axis. If something goes wrong in your gut, your brain is damaged. And if something goes wrong in your brain, your gut is damaged. So these two things are very, very important. So make sure no constipation, oil yourself well, make sure that uh, you take enough fatty acids uh, and try to reduce all the acidic foods and you'll see uh, you will transform uh, yourself completely and Alzheimer's will never even be a condition that you will suffer from. Wow. Thank you. That's very helpful tips. Uh, last uh, week, we had a question uh, regarding the skin. So uh, before we uh, close, uh, can you just quickly answer that question? What was that question? I, I seriously... Question uh, how do we have good skin? Yeah, um, see. How can we? Yeah. Alam, skin, now look at an apple. An apple skin is basically because of what is inside the apple, right? If the apple is juicy, nice, fresh, you find the skin very nice. But same apple, you keep it after some days when it loses its moisture, it becomes wrinkled and dry. It loses its luster, everything. Skin has a very close relation with two things, moisture and oil. Okay, because oil is very, very important for the skin. It holds on to things. And that is why in Ayurveda, we, when we say we apply oil to the skin, we call that process called snehana. Sneha means love. When we apply oil to the skin, oil is also the seat of millions and millions of nerve endings. Okay, so if I have to make two brains, one is inside here and the other, if I take up the whole skin and put it into a lump, I have another brain. Your skin is another brain. So when you oil your skin, you're maintaining not only your mental health, but also maintaining the structure of your skin. Oil internally, whatever I told for Alzheimer's, is also the key for your uh, skin health, you know. And your skin is not only this external skin, your skin is even from your oral mucus to your anal canal. The whole thing is skin. We are nothing but all the organs wrapped up between two skins, the GI system skin and the external skin. So do that. Take in good healthy fats. Make sure fat are a part of your diet, not uh, too much uh, saturated fat. But yes, uh, natural uh, plant-based uh, fats like seeds, like flax seeds, sunflower seeds. Seeds are good in oil. Make sure that you take a lot of pulses in your food. Pulses add a lot of oil in your, uh, you know, uh, your system. And that will help you to get good skin. That's the key. That's a simple key. And one way I always tell, I do not... Uh, you know, at least twice in a week. I do it every day. I don't use a soap to, uh, you know, have a shower. I use oil for my showering. I apply oil to my body and then use hot water to take off the oil. That's the only way I uh, have a shower. But yes, people can do that at least twice a week, you know, where they can skip their soaps and just oil themselves well. Let them be lubricated well and you'll see the skin will shine off. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajesh, for this amazing, amazing tips that you have given us. Uh, I'm sure many have benefited out of this. So today we will wind up a session with you. And uh, thank you so much for being our first guest. It's been a pleasure and I'm getting so many reviews. I think I'm going to have you back very soon. And I'm popping this out. It's a secret, but I know that you're coming up with a book. So maybe when your book is launched, we will come back with you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. So much, Rajesh. All the thank best you. to thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Bye, guys. That was with Mr. Uh, Dr. Rajesh Tavera, and we had a great session. So please uh, let us know how you found it. Uh, it will be good to have feedbacks. We have also started a YouTube channel. So please subscribe, like our Pothos events page, Build up the community so we can help you and we can serve you with a lot of more information and a lot of good guests coming all the way. So be prepared for October, November. There are a lot of things happening. So next week, we have uh, Mr. Nilesh Pachaj. He's a wealth, uh, you know, he he, uh, he teaches, uh, he has a wealth company, Cedrus Wealth Partners, and he is going to be uh, there talking to us about investing in India, 
about the COVID situation, how you can manage your investments. It's going to be great help. Come up with your questions. Let us know what you want to ask him, and we will get you your answers. So thank you so much for today. See you next week. Bye.